Uh, Scott, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do a short uh, opening. Um, it's uh, how we uh, say every, it comes before everything else. Dalanda, new way, you at Nishwinus, you get go there, sweat or see us, go in to go Havado, Donanga, I got quite a do hick tucks, and yo ya go he day hand out, and has a goya diesel. Nega, so go away, young go ya and duck, gonna quaffra, nega gando, then what they got to gain us any on goya duck softa. Nay, gonna away, oh, so go away, gonna quee, on go away, nay, away and ento. They hand away for canto, so go ya diesel, so go away, gonna on yok. Nay, away such cannot one up on you. Nadine and we hear Kia Scott and Dwaya who go on a goha. Scott and Dwaya no one you took any or took Nanga, a go on a goha. So that is how we begin. But when our ancestors gathered, we did it a little different. Um, we, ha we would have uh, a sent out wampum strings. And I didn't. That's one of the little things I brought. It's a little string like that, and it's got notches on it. So before the event, if, the, if it, this was a planned event, it would be uh, months ahead of time that we would send out, because it's not like a car. When you're living 10 hours away, are you going to be here tomorrow? Walking or canoeing, it's going to take a long time. So. Our uh, runners that we sent out, they would hold this, and that's the message that they would put in there, that this event is going to happen. It's okay. It's all right. It's, all, it's okay. Yeah. Um, and um, these runners are gifted runners because how did they know how fast a runner was. Well, when they come with the muskets, it would take 10 seconds for the to load. So our people, our warriors figured that out. As soon as they shot, then they would come and they would be there 100 yards in 10 seconds. But there's runners that are faster, these runners that took these messages they would be like in eight to seven seconds running because that's how we that's how we uh, got around <laughs> we walked we ran uh, and our games were uh, that's how we um, I guess uh, nurtured our ability to run and how to move maneuver because you're running through the forest so now all of these nations that were to be invited these runners would take it to them and they would send this message, they would give this message because we're talking, our ancestors knew many languages. I bet you the common person would understand 18 to 20 languages because they traveled, they hunted, they traveled all over. And so they would, they would present that to them. So now, there's these notches on these sticks, and that re re, uh, uh, represents sleeps. So every time asleep, they would take their knife and take that off. And after all those notches are gone, it's time to go. So they're leaving your travel time too. They're, you're gonna take so long to get there because our people did it so many times, they knew how long the, this, this travel is going to be. And so now, you, they all come and gather like you're here. And we would greet them, and we would use part of our condolence ceremony when we raise chiefs, we have a, a ceremony that we do, we call it a con, uh, condolence um, and uh, I belong on the Younger Brothers uh, Condolence Council, and we have two. We have Elder Nation Brothers, and we have Younger, Na younger, bro younger Brothers, Elder Nation Brothers that belong, and we help elevate chiefs. 
And so now they would take that and they would say, now that you have come over the forest and you had to step over logs, you had to step over streams, and it could be that one time you stepped on a thorn and it lodged in your foot. If this has happened to you, we would take that thorn out of the heel of your foot. And so now you are here and that we have formed a comfortable seat for you. So before you sit down, we're going to give you a fresh spring water to clear your throat. Because on the way, it could be dusty. And even in your eyes, there could dust could be in your eyes. So we're going to take a soft cloth. We would use the, that, like these are metaphors that our ancestors used that, are, that uh, was so beautiful. And in condolence, we would say that we would take the soft underbelly of the fawn and that we would wipe your tears. That the tears from the dust, you know, wipe that dust out of your eyes. And before you sit down, there may be blood on that seat. It could have been caused by uh, a conflict between your people and our people. And now, again, I would take the soft cloth and I would wipe that blood away. So when you sit down, you will sit at ease. And I will rub your body down with spring water to, to make your mind clear. And so now, when you sit down, you will sit at ease, and now you will hear my words. But that's the kind of <coughs> compassion that when our peacemaker made our law of scano, kasadshra, that means that scano means so much of a greeting when you meet somebody. Like in, in Kiyuga, that's what we would say, scano, I'm glad you're alive. Or even in Mohawk, they would say, sego. In Oneida, they would say, soguli. On Onondaga, they would say, hi, uh, hi. And Kiyuga, we'd say Scano, and then um, Seneca, they would say Iskano, I. And it means the same thing. And so now, when we we're all, all gathered here, that each one that has been given that string, now you will stand up and we will hear your voice. And every person, every nation, see that that wampum will come back. It'll come back to, to the ones that sent it out. And when we use that, we put it in our, our bag, our wampum string bag, and we reuse that because we have many events. And, and so we have see all these people out there and there so, could be somebody listening. And that's where Speakers are born. And it could be anybody. It could be a regular fighting man. Just, it doesn't have to be a chief to be able to speak. They learn it by hearing. And for myself, you know, it's taken 43 years to know what I know because I wasn't, uh, my grandmother didn't teach me about language. She was, her and my mom were both fluent uh, Mohawk speakers. I never heard it. So in my early years, I start going to Longhouse, get involved. But I didn't go there to be a faith keeper. They just asked me. And I know when they, once they ask you, you, uh, you ask, you, you 
do it. You don't say, you don't say no. And um, so during, during that time, a lot of where our uh, ancestors used to legislate, it's all overgrown with forest. So these type of gathering is, is getting that ready again. And why are we doing it? Why all of a sudden that our people are gathering, wanting to know things? And who is it? Our ancestors are speaking. Our ancestors are speaking to you that we have to get ready because things are coming. It's been predicted that this is going to be we're on this road of these predictions, and we're right on it. We can't get out of the road. We're right on that prediction. It's coming. And uh, so now you're going to uh, get ready. How do you get ready? You can have all the knowledge of all these belts, but what you have to have is their food. Your food is first. You have to know how to dry your corn, how to prepare things. Like, um, it was a good example, it was at Oneida, and um, this guy that always makes cornbread, he says, uh, I says, oh, you got any cornbread? He says, oh, no. He says, uh, it's, it's funny, you know, that uh, people want cornbread, but they want it every day. And uh, you know it's uh, like it's like hey it's cool let's have let's have cornbread today you know but there was a time when that was that was every day that our that our mothers and our grandmothers and our and our daughters they would get all that ready every day every day they would pound that corn and and get that ready because one day. The way life is today, it's not going to be. And for myself, I can see it as plain as you are sitting there. I can, I can see it coming because during your life, you see these things happening. You see these, uh, these gatherings. Like in 1988, when we were, I seen my first condolence council. We just didn't hardly know anything. Mean young guys that we're, st we're starting to learn. And so we start learning the songs, six songs of condolence, and never ever forgot it. Don't need a paper, it's all up here. And, and then we start uh, condoling, learning about the cane, you know, how to, how to make that roll call it's all part of condolence ceremony. And gosh, now all the ones that are our, our, our elders and our teachers that have taught us all that, they're all gone. So we're to take it the rest of the way. And this is our, this is our, uh, our duty, our duty for our ancestors. And so if you, we eat the right foods, where does right foods, how does that help you? It helps you make good decisions. Because I didn't, I had a friend over in the Netherlands, he come to see me. And uh, we went in the grocery store and he's a chef over in, um, he was a, was a chef over in Rotterdam. And uh, he comes and he says, Ken, he says, all this, Food is killing people. He says, most of all this food here is poison. And I just didn't pay much attention to it until it happened to me. And uh, now I feel like a, like a new person, like, like, like you're reborn. That our food, corn, our beans, and our squash so all that, all that, all that food is uh, is making our mind clear.
to make those those right decisions for our, for our people. And so now, when you got the food, because each household a long time ago had medicines, medicines hanging, drying. So that's the next step. So now, when you've got all of that, maybe at the beginning, there will be many that have been afflicted by diabetes and uh, different addictions that it'll slowly go. Maybe those people will die, but your next generation, because, you know, when we're talking 50 years, but what's 50 years in uh, time? It's a blink, you know, for how, how fast that goes. Like when you first, start, first started learning, 43 years ago, that seemed like <laughs> not very long ago. And so now, now you'll start to think about your ceremonies, doing your ceremonies the way your ancestors do. Because what's going to happen is one day, my great uncle used to tell me, he says, one day you'll go and you'll tur go to turn that switch on for that light. It's not coming on. And, and once it goes off, it's never coming back. So this is the things that, that we have to do. And then your ceremonies, then your laws. Understand your laws. Because what our law, the difference between our white brother and our law is, is our white brother's law lacks compassion. Our law is able to, because uh, their law, they have certain things written down. That's supposed to go that way. But in our law, we can bend it. It won't break break our law, but you can bend it. And so uh, when we say wampum belt, it's, it's wrong. We say koswenta. Koswenta means that something that's laid down Marking an event. And there's one belt here. We call it, it's a, it's a Euron belt, wind dot. And it's the poor nation, poor nation belt. And you'll see the men figures, but a lot of them say that's a shield. But that's a bow, because at that time, that was our livelihood. We had to use that to live by and to protect ourselves. And your first top one here is a stone. The next is the deer. The next is a bear. And the next is a cord. And the peacemaker come from the bear nation. And he, and he traveled. The, uh, the mother and daughter went from there and they went to Tayindanega. And that's where the uh, woman was, uh, she got with a child. But her daughter says that she's been with no man. How did that happen? And so her mother was, was not believing her. Well, consequently, the, the baby was born, and they uh, tried to destroy this. Uh, the, the mother tried to destroy, the, the grandmother tried to destroy this, her grandson by burying and burning. And in the, in the wintertime, they, were, they took it out in the wa on the ice and cut a hole and pushed the baby down, and the baby disappeared. And each time they, she did that, that she come back, and the baby was in uh, her mother's arms. So this is a long, long story. And it, actually, this, this story is nine days. <laughs> it takes a long time, and that's what our great law committee has started, uh, while it would be 11 years now that it started in Oneida, 
and uh, that now we were traveling to all these territories saying this story, trying to remember all these stories. And people, well, elders were saying that we shouldn't do it because we, we don't really know it. It's, uh, well, we're going to make mistakes, but we're going to eventually get our um, the story straight. And they, and they talked about, a little um, while ago, they talked about fire. Uh, this is what, uh, uh, at the beginning of each council, they would um, say this, uh, use the string, strings, and what we would call that is kajista. Uh, it's a fire. And it's, and it's funny, a lot of our people have, um, they went up to uh, Kanawagi, and they went to move the fire and uh, they used, uh, took the coals with a shovel. Well, you don't have, see that's, that's uh, almost like our metaphors, you know, like about wiping your tears, you don't actually do that. You just use that as a symbol of how that the different parts of, uh, of uh, your grief that you go through, your steps that you go through. And uh, so they would open their council, what we call Kajista. And each nation would have one of these. It's a nation fire. And this is what we call the... Um, Hunashinido. Hunashinido negoswenta. So, this here is a cross, but when you, when you um, go right across all our nations in the West, that symbol here could be four direction, but a lot out of the West say a star. So, beyond the stars, where the peacemaker came from, and he's to earth here, to our land. And this is what he brought us and why he picked our people in Upper New York State because we're the worst people. And in the peacemaker's travel, that's what he wanted to see because the nations that were he was meeting he met this hunter. He says, I'm going this way. He says, oh, no, you better not go that way. There's bad people out that way. And the peacemaker says, that's the exact people that I want to see. But what the peacemaker made is that he made the people decide for themselves what they want, what they wanted to do. Made them decide on themselves not to actually tell them that this is, this is not what we're supposed to do. And uh, there's the, uh, on the bottom there, you'll see like a diamond. That what we call in four directions, the peacemaker traveled to uh, bring peace among all nations. Our nation start, and then it's to extend to other nations. And... Uh, if our white brother didn't come, we would have all been under one, under one law. I'm probably not going to talk about all of them because there's so many. But this is what we called Skohiskoa Negoswe. And when you see this belt, it's a circle. Every belt is based on a circle. Our ceremonies are in a circle. Our thinking is in a circle. The universe is in a circle. And it's 50 wide. So when we talk about this belt, that from the east to the west, 
It'll touch the shores right to the oceans, the wings of that tree, and to the, to the north, to the south. The branches of that tree is going to be there. And the chiefs, I guess if this was open and there was no water there and we were in a circle and you noticed all those trees are all the same level. The level of those trees are the tops of the chiefs' heads. Their great trunks, all the trees, the, there's 50 trees around you, and the, that's, that's the chiefs. They're called all equal. No one is higher, no one is lower. Each one has a, a specific duty for their family. And after, when the, plant, uh, uh, the tree is first planted, it doesn't grow uh, pine cones right away. Well, when it does grow the pine cones, that pine cones, that means that it, uh, we call it kunalongkwa. It's the pine cones represent love. Love to us is helping and caring for one another. And in a lot of the speeches where you're, you're talking about here, too, about, uh, about the white mat, this is what we call the white mat. And uh, actually, we're under that, uh, the tree, you know, from the east, west, south, north. This is what you're, this is what you're sitting on right here. It's a white mat. Because... The peacemaker used as a symbol, if we take the soft feathery down of the globe thistle, we would make a belt like this and for a seat for the chiefs to sit on. And in the middle of that tree is all your laws. And it's in its uh, the circle. I didn't have a, I don't have a circle, but it's it's bound 50 times around like a it's about this big. And it's got all these strings along 50 chiefs in the middle. And then the people and our laws and our, our ceremonies, everything's in the middle. So he assigned uh, where the great tree is planted is where the Onondaga live, the Anadaga. And uh, this is where there's 14 Hoyani. We call chiefs, we call them Hoyani. Perfect people that have, that have uh, understanding and they look after their, pe their families. Each one has a family that uh, they look after. And uh, you can see that where the tree is planted, if you turn it this way, you can see the tree. You see it? And uh, the diamonds represent each chief. And in the middle, we have uh, 14 Onondaga chiefs that's 14 Onondaga chiefs, and they're assigned to look after the council fire. So when we have grievances amongst, and it affects all nations, then we have what we call Grand Council. We go and gather, and we still do that today. We still, uh, like one of the things that uh, I guess I repaid 
uh, one of the um, the chiefs, uh, Jake Thomas, Harajigrenta, he held that held that title, Diohueto, a Kyuga chief, and so he taught me all these things, and I was always amazed that how he could go from one side to the other in all these belts and just go. I was always amazed. So he taught me all, all of this. And uh, how I repaid him is that I could drive him to Grand Council. And uh, that from Grand River, that's four and a half hours. But it's like as if it took minutes because all along, the way Jake would be talking. I says, Jake, how did you used to go to Grand, uh, Grand Council? Which way did you go? He says, 25. So it co comes from five to Buffalo to 20, and then you'd get to Onondaga. And they would uh, take this old uh, car, um, then they'd have maybe four blowouts or something, and they'd have to take their patching stuff, and uh, they'd get up these, barely get up this hill, and then they'd go, go down the other side. And the same thing, you know, and, and he says, uh, that's how we used to travel, and that's, that's a lot of dedication, you know, to, uh, they didn't get paid for it. They did it because they believed it. That's why it lives on today. This here is what we call Hayawahta Negaswanta. So to your left would be Kanyenge, uh, Kahaga, Mohawk, the next one, Eneyotka, Oneida, the tree in the middle, Onondage, and uh, the next one, Gayakonog, and the next one is uh, Onondawaga, people of the big hill. And the reason why is that we have double path. You yeah, see the double path, the, the white on the ends, is that now peace has come. Now we have a path going in, and we also have a path going out. And that's why the concept of a, of a, double, a double line, like you'll see in a, in a two-row, there's a double line because the creator will never send you down a road where there's a road coming out because you hear so many stories of people who have been just down and out and you'd never think they would come back and one day things happen that uh, they, would, uh, they would change their mind And I'll, and I'll give you um, an example. Uh, my brother, he uh, um, didn't care for anybody. Everything was himself. And so he was drinking, made lots of money as a steel, high steel painter. And one day he went blind and he had kidney failure. And so he went four years like that. But when he come out of that, he was that way for three days. And when he come out, it was like a different person existed. And if, if, he was, if it wasn't that day, um, I wouldn't uh, give him one of my kidneys. So, it gave him 11 years, and man, in 11 years, he made up for, for all of that, that he created. The bad things. My real brother showed up. And so there's an example there how things can change. And I think it's people, why are, are, uh, it hurts, you know. That's why I do all, all these workshops, 
not only showing how to do these and the stories go with that, is that making rattles, making canes, all these little things, I never knew why I was doing it. I just loved doing it. Because all these elders, they, they taught me all, all how to do that. All these crafts, rattles and canes. And while we have different gustoas, you know, our, our feather hats. And so a lot of our people have addictions. And as if, if this is a workshop that helps doing that, because an example is in uh, Oneida, this guy, he was, uh, he liked to drink a lot. And uh, the one that facilitating that uh, workshop, she says, you know what? Out of the, like sometimes I'd go there for five, six days sometimes and do a workshop. And he said he'd quit drinking for all those days. And I guess that made me feel pretty good. And so this way, when we have addictions, that's all you're thinking about. You're not thinking about anything else but that. But it may not solve that problem, but it'll at least make the times, the distance between your next, uh, whatever you're doing, whatever you're addicted, it'll be a little further apart. And then you're going to do it. Maybe you'll pick up and, do, and start doing it. And then pretty soon you'll say, I don't need that. And this is what, that our, that our people have, that have addictions, they have no place to turn because that, that's all they know and that's all they've heard. So this way that we can create something because when time comes then and we're not ready, we're going to suffer, the people that don't, want to listen are going to suffer that aren't prepared with that about their food and our planting you know this uh, thing about uh, our, our garden program in uh, Quimcong that there was just a few that began that first year and that it like crippled the next year and of planting there again the voices are calling the voices are telling you you know, that's our ancestors' way of making something happen. A disease coming, and you can't go no place, and now you're going to plant. So now you're going to eat real food, real food that, you know, and it makes you so good when you can go out and dig those potatoes or whatever, and how to share, how to share with your neighbors we planted lots of potatoes. There's no way we're going to eat all those potatoes. So we took them to all our, our neighbors all over. And uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, we just took bags of them to, uh, to share. To share what your, uh, the way I, I, our ancestors did, because the way it is now is that the reason why we have uh, jealousies Jealousy is a sickness because it's created by being able to be better than your neighbor. You got more things, but you share those things. Like, for example, like going over and cutting their grass. The simple thing like that out of the time of your day that you can, that you, you can help somebody. And that uh, use that love, what we call the help and care for one another. And that's what that, this talks about. All of, the, all of these things here talks about the very thing I'm talking about right now, is that our people let it happen because our white brother brought these things to destroy our people. And it's working because our people fell into it without looking. Because if you want to learn something, your eyes aren't going to tell you much. 
You got to use this, and you got to use your soul and your mind to see. And uh, an example of a, of a circle. Is uh, this is what we call Hoyani Negaswenta? It's our uh, our chief's belt, and you can see if you put it in a circle, you see it. It's that tree. And I've been, I've been so lucky that I was, uh, I figured it out for myself. In reading a manuscript from a chief that went to Washington, and I read it, and he says, the very first thing he put up is the great tree, and he put it in a circle. He says, this is how we see the belt. We see it in a circle. And, we, and he stood it up like that in a circle. And I guess the things that, we, that help us are our dreams. I shared some of my dreams. I'll share this first one that I had is that when I was about 15, and I woke up and I dreamt I was talking to all these people, like as far as you could see people. And I just, you know, you think you've, you've just dreamt a crazy dream that would never come true. And you're nurtured during your time of growing by elders. Because my first teacher, oh, when I was 33, I start really learning um, language. Because other than that, isolated words weren't getting it won't, won't, language won't survive with isolated words. And so what he did is that he started teaching us the um, Thanksgiving address. And that he says, just go as far as you can. And, you know, that's, just, that's what we did. So we just went and as a short version. Then we went to a long version. The long version today for me is like around 25 minutes. You'd say the whole thing, but I had a I had another um, my uh, cousin. He's got the same clan as me, Dwayne Hagar, dear. And uh, there's no such thing as a short version for him. <laughs> He'll teach you the long one, because uh, uh, they were doing a funeral, and the funeral speech is quite long. And I says, uh, uh, somebody was asking me, uh, why, is, why is he talking so long? I says, because he was taught by Jim. <laughs> so uh, my next one is, it was night, but the moon was full. And I was up the road sitting beside this uh, oak tree and I was looking up, and I seen this eagle. It was, it was circling. And you know, the white tail feathers of the eagle was so big, that it covered the whole moon. And he kept on coming down, and he's coming right down like that, coming down, coming down. And one of his feathers come off. It's, you know, when the feather's coming down, it's going like that. And I was looking at the eagle. I was looking at that feather. I says, when it falls down, I'm going to run over there and pick it up. So 
the trees were at a level, and that eagle feather went, and I lost that eagle feather. Oh, it says, where'd that go? Man, all of a sudden, that eagle feather just brushed, brushed my face like that, and, and it was in my arm. Just, it, was, it was like an eagle feather like that. It was in my arm. And then the eagle, he started coming down, and he landed right in front of me. And he lands like with his wings way up like that. He comes down like that. And his hand, it started turning to hands. And then he comes down like that. And he's a person. But his hair was long all the way down to the ground. So that's, that's the, um, when the creator made the eagle, that's, that's who he was. And so when a tragedy is a tragedy, sometimes it's unbelievable that you can get through, you can get through that. So my first grandson, uh, he fell out of the car and he died, he broke his neck. And so we had him at the house, uh, Wine High, that's, that's his name, uh, a, a snow snake lodged up high on a shelf. That's what his name me meant. And so we had somebody come from uh, Toronto. It would be his, his, uh, his uncle, his, his dad's uncle, my grandson. And so when, when he come in the door, the little boy, He's like that too. He can he can see things, and uh, he he right. He, that's the very first thing he told me. He says, "Do you dress up in your traditional clothes?" I says, "No." I says, "No." I says, "Why?" I says, "He says because you know we had shears in the front." He says there was a man standing there, and I says, "What what did he look like?" I said he had long long white hair so you just have to put two and two together the eagle took him back so sometimes dreams like that is way this was years ahead my grandson wasn't even born yet when i had that dream but it, it, it uh, lessens the load, you know, when things, bad things happen. And uh, just about, oh gosh, uh, eight months ago, I had this dream. And we were all standing with on our knees and it was a bowl like like a like um, a valley and it was all cleared just like it is here and uh, all us men the warriors were standing we were standing like this and we all just had our breech cloths on, and our breech cloths were brown, and they was well worn, you know, like you, you, you've worn them for years. You know how leather, when it gets worn, it gets kind of shiny, and, and uh, so there was somebody in the middle, and they were speaking, and they were pointing. He says, Ne ah rendwa suios, and he says, and that's who you are. And he called everyone by name. So I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm hearing different names, but I'm really not listening because I'm waiting for him to call my name. And so. He come to my name, he says, Hong Hyo. 
Ne ad and wa suios. You repeat that after me. So that's what I said. Ne ad and wa suios. And he pointed right at me. You, that's you who you are. I never knew what that meant. Ne ad and wa suios. So I went to school with this, uh, I didn't even know in high school that this, this guy. He's fluent. He's a fluent speaker, and today he looks after all kinds of feasts, medicines. And so I, I went to his house. And of course, when you talk to people like that, they're not gonna, you're not going to ask them right away. You're going to go through a whole bunch of things first, you know, a whole bunch of stories. And uh, so I says, uh, PR, what's that? Uh, what does that mean, that dendwat suiyos? Ne a dendwat suiyos. He says that means that yous are lucky. And that's, this is what I'm telling you, that we are lucky. We are lucky to be who we are. How we're descendants of, of people who thought that way. And that, that's uh, why we have to eat our right food to, to get back to that. So we don't have that, uh, um, those addictions and that. Um, it's easy. It's easy when you put your mind to it. Because when you say that a, a food, you see skull and crossbones on that food, it's poison. And that's, that's, that's what's, uh, I guess, preventing us to, to be who we really are and to get back to the earth. And um, I got this one more story. Um, and uh, I don't know if any of you know Tom Porter. He's very, uh, he's just unbelievable. Um, he says they wanted him to go to this uh, um, big thing to do with the earth in Toronto. And all people from all over the world are going to be there. He says, I don't know about all that environment and stuff like that. And when people say that, you know darn well they know. And uh, so he was sleeping, and something told him in a dream, you have to go there. So he got up in his little wee car, and he started driving to uh, Toronto from, uh, it be around um, Fonda, New York. Anybody you know is where Fonda, New York is? It's a ways away from here. And so he's driving along, and uh, he said he likes George Jones, Tammy Wynette, all these old uh, country and western singers. He just loves that music, turns it on, gets to another place. You know how they fade out the, the stations. They has to get another station. And so he's uh, uh, going along all of a sudden. Somebody starts talking Mohawk. And he says, oh, they must be uh, just doing language, you know, ter ter our territory. It's all along there, right up, uh, you know, there's Onondaga, there's uh, Cuga territory and Seneca territory that we go through to get before you get to Toronto and get to the QAW. And, um, and so he really wasn't listening. And uh, so he says, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll just shut it off. He, he turned the radio off, and it kept on talking. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he started listening, because he really wasn't listening to it, really. And he, he says, this is the Mother Earth talking to you. What I want you to say when you get there is that I feel... Uh, terrible, bad the, about the people that they're not honoring the earth. Me. And uh, this is what I want you to tell them. He says, in two times out of the year, that night 
and day is equal. I want you to tell them this, that you're all together and thank me. And I, 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 uh, Tom, told, when Tom told me that, I says, I have always thought that way. Just like we met somebody on the boat, they says, how long have you been thinking like that? I says, I've been thinking that way all my life. Because my grandmother, when I was a little boy, uh, we lived with my grandma. So um, she got me to, uh, I guess I was around uh, three and a half. And uh, so she so to, says, asked me to go down the road to get uh, milk. So she gave me two, um, two quart bottles. And she says, go down and um, get some milk. She gave me two. I just, I thought to myself, how the heck am I going to carry that? And I says, oh, okay, I'll, I'll do it. And it was so scary because when you're uh, a little boy and uh, and how big is a uh, how big is a cow? He was I went right in the barn with the guy and the cow was like a giant. Yeah, uh, he says okay, I did that for my grandma, okay, and I went home and I uh, I carried them. It was about about an eighth of a mile that I that I carried these like that, and I was clutching them so. So hard, this one time I dropped one and it smashed and those girls going to school said, ah, you're going to get it when you get home. And so I got to my uh, grandma's and uh, she says, uh, she, oh, that's okay. You know, I thought, oh, that's nice that she didn't get, didn't get mad at me. But that's one of the things that are, um, you know, I've been lucky to have these kind of people that, would give you something to do that you thought was uh, not possible. So uh, those are dreams that when you have them, they're so real and you can live by them and it can help you to, uh, I guess, to live a kind of life that you know, we are lucky. We are so lucky to hear it. And uh, when when we're, uh, I guess, when our mind is all jumbled up, like when I lost my grandson, your mind is like that. But if you take one and put it down, you take another and put it down, you put it in order, you stand yourself because you're on the ground. That's what they say. They stand you back up that you can see again. You can see the sun. You can see the sky. You can see the grass. You can see the birds and enjoy everything what the Creator has put here for you. So this is, uh, that's what we do in condolence also. To um, That's something that I haven't learned yet about the eyes, ears, and throat and our recital, how to recite that. And if you've seen this cane, this is, uh, I guess, the one that um, taught me how to read this. I don't bring his cane. But when, I, when I bring his cane, it's when we do our condolence. It's a little different than this, but it's got a wood handle and it's curved here. But I've made this uh, just for, you know, like when we do our great law, that I, that's what I use to put on the front. But that's what that is. In times of death, you have to have a clear-minded person to elevate your mind. And this is how that is all set up. 
That is all set up with our Elder Nation brothers, the Mohawk, Onondaga, and the uh, Seneca. And underneath here are the Oneida and the Cuga, which are younger brothers. And any of those chiefs that pass on, is that, uh, if say, if up here, Tadodaho, here, if he passes on, then the clan mother from there passes what we call uh, uh, notification of death. Right here, that one, the purple one. So they have a custodian, and they all have a, have a, um, uh, they all gather, and they all pass that over. And the ones on the other side are the ones that are going to decide when they're going to have a condolence to raise that chief. And so we set that date, and then we send that date back. So then they prepare. Then they prepare all these. I uh, was talking about uh, rehearsals. We have to have rehearsals because uh, uh, as, as people now, we don't, we don't live that anymore like that, like our ancestors did. Because when they did it, they didn't have no rehearsals because they lived it and they knew it. Inside out, they knew it. So uh, it's about an hour and 15 minutes to recite this, but it's just part of it, just part of a whole day long. It starts around 9 o'clock to um, around 7 in the evening. And that's the time. We have a pipe ceremony. And... In, and in condolence, when we raise chiefs and when we make a belt, when you belt, we also use that, that, that pipe ceremony. It's almost like used, you know, you just, have, you just have the pipe, but it's used differently. But basically, we're, we're doing the same, same thing. But it didn't start out that way. The very first wampum, I, you, I, I noticed them uh, beads that went around. They, they looked like they're, they're wood and just painted black. I can, I can tell. Because uh, when uh, I first come up here, I noticed uh, the uh, 1764 belt, because the, the one that um, got that made, uh, Marie Switzer, he wanted me to make him one. He's from North Bay, and he wanted me to make him one. And I told him the price, and he thought the price was too high, I guess. He got somebody else to make it. But when uh, I come up here, I seen it. I says, oh, that's, uh, and I wanted to ask him, how much uh, did they charge? And my mine was probably quite a bit more. But what they did is that they died abalone shell and I know right away just looking at it I said that's abalone shell you can look recognize it right away from looking at real because I've looked at real so many times and handled it so many times you can recognize real from fake even sometimes even have what we call macaroni <laughs> macaroni shell and uh, so uh, I says, you know, uh, I went to Ganawagi, and they had uh, somebody make up a five-nation belt, that um, Hiawatha belt. This one? They, uh, they made him a belt. And so he, he says, Ken, I'll show you something. And he says that, he looked, showed me that belt, and it was almost white. 
And now the belt that they have here is, uh, is it ordained that holds that belt? Pretty soon that belt is all going to be white. And they ch charged them, um, I think it was 14000 to do that belt, and that was, <laughs> that was quite a few years ago. And, um, yeah, that there are people out there that do those kind of things to people just for money. But I do it because I believe in it. And so this is Sumac. And when Hiawatha lost his daughters, this is what he was using. And he was so overburdened with grief that when he traveled around, that he made a pole like that, and he, a crotch, and he put a pole across. And this is the very first things that he was talking about, the eyes, the ears, and the throat. And this is what he was talking about for... Um, about the eyes, you know, about taking the soft underbelly of the of the fawn, wiping the tears, and this is eyes and the ears. Your ears because of become plugged because of grief. And your voice, your throat, there's a there's a there's a lump here that's caused by grief. So this is what they're If for one day I have done this. I have done my job. And then this is, this is the subject we call our requickening address, that we greet people just like I greeted you in our part of that condolence we take. And when we have greetings like this, we use part of that to, um, you know, to, to, to make you feel good. And... So the peacemaker come along, but now what he used is uh, he took the quill of the eagle and he broke it up and made it like that. And he done the same thing. He put the, the quill over it and the three things, but he says, I'm going to add. I'm going to add what you said. And that's where the, all of the 15 strings come in. The added other strings, like the cone, they're your seat. So red stains on the seat, yellow, yellow spots in your stomach, loss of the sun, loss of the sky, your grave. Because when we have grief, when we turn away from the grave, we don't look back. Because that's a reminder that can take your mind when you when your mind is always on the your loved one because your loved one would not want you to do that way wouldn't want you to think that way would want you to get past get past that we're not forgetting them but everything goes on doesn't the water still flows the, the trees still grow the grass still grows. Everything goes on. But you don't forget them. You always, always remember them and smile about the things that they, they did, did for you as, uh, when you're growing up or, uh, or your friends. And this belt here, Goyani, and the Goyani Negaswanta. And you see that line that their clan mothers are all connected. They're all equal, like those chiefs we were talked about. When we see their heads that are all the same level. And then a circle, too. And their, uh, their duties are to look after all the names. Look after 
and work with the chiefs and their families, and that's their, their council fire in the middle, that's their, their, uh, their fire. And uh, so, for example, my name, Haohio, where the sky meets the water, it's, it's, a, it's a dear clan name. And we're the one, only ones allowed to carry that name. No one else carries that name. But when I pass on to the spirit world, it's, it's uh, dormant for one year, one cycle. So after the cycle, then the next one that's born will take that name. So that name, from the beginning, people have held that name. And um, uh, what's happened now is that we have to come up with new names for the reason is that there we have uh, po populated into many more than our ancestors did. There's more of us now, so we have to come up with uh, new names. So there, we have people that have to make up, make up names like when you're born, you know? What day was it born? I had one uh, boy that we billeted from Gunawagi when they had that little NHL at, uh, at um, Six Nations. And he says, I said, what's your, what's your name? He says, uh, Stormy. He says, when I was born, it was storming. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so there, you know, uh, names that were a given like that. And that's the, the clan mother, that's, that's up to her to, to look after them. So she has all these names in, uh, in her, uh, I guess, her pouch. And uh, so she has uh, to look after all that. And when you hold a belt like that, it always goes, goes to the left. It slopes to the left. So whenever you put a belt down, that's the way you're looking at it, the way it's supposed to be. And there's those three things again. Those three things of uh, peace, power, righteousness. So we call that hospitality, hospitality belt. So these are the ones, you know, we're using today that without even knowing that we're using and, uh, a belt that uh, the people that got together here and prepared this, that's what we call hospitality. Getting the food ready, making a seat, nice comfortable seat for you. And this, in case it rains, because you gotta have a backup. You know, whenever you're doing things, you should always have a backup. And my elder friend, that sometimes when you're put on the spot, he says, always be prepared. My first teacher of uh, this guy who um, um, taught our Thanksgiving address to him. But it's so funny. Uh, we were uh, taking attendance. Um, and getting nicknames, you know, the, the, you wonder where the heck these nicknames come from. Well, this is this one. His name is, do we still call him that? Me and my brother always, uh, always call him that because of this one time. Uh, and Reggie couldn't hear out of this, hardly hear out of this one ear. So he says, uh, he says, uh, announcing your name. He says, Leroy. He says, whoa, zero? No, no, Leroy. He says, oh, zero. So from then on, you know, his name was zero. And uh, he's well, no, well, pretty uh, well versed in uh, language and doing all kinds of good things. And uh, so this one time I was in the States and I found this chocolate bar, zero. 
So I, so I brought it to him, and he uh, says, here you go. <laughs> he calls us the same thing, zero. This is, hi, zero. <laughs> So sometimes um, it's requested that, uh, and any time you see it's uh, six, that it's, you know, it's after 1722 when the Tuscaroras come in. So we added another nation to uh, here. And um, so this belt uh, is sometimes uh, it's requested by uh, it doesn't have to be the clan mother or the chief. It can be a, requested by a person of, a, of, that, of the nation that wants to hear the great law. Then, then the, 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 your, your chief has to listen. So they, they put that to council and then they decide, well, we're going we're gonna to talk about the great law now. So this is uh, the diamonds that uh, represent uh, each nation. And we also even have a belt to... Adoption. This could be a person, it could be a family, or it could be a nation. Because one bead, that's what it can represent, just one bead. It can re re represent one soul or one nation. That's the power of just one little bead. Which comes from that, Ogisak. We, that's what we call our quahog, quahog shell in English, but we call it Ogisak. And that's the purple and the white, where that comes from. And um, sometime, if you're lucky, that this whole thing is all purple. It's like gold if you ever find one of them. And sometimes in the south end of uh, Long Island, the, there's a red, red quahog. And they're so rare. Uh, this one guy that's been doing it all his life, he's got a string maybe that long that's just red. Beautiful. But that, that's, that's the power of the shell, comes from the water. Ogisa, oh, that's, that's, that's the water, and I guess the, um, the purple and the white that uh, are mixed, mixed in that. So when the peacemaker um, I guess the Seneca, it was a great warrior nation. And uh, they're wondering about burying their weapons. They says, how, how, are, we gonna, how are we going to uh, defend ourselves? Because when you think about it, our weapon is peace, power, and righteousness. That's your weapon. You don't have to have no guns. That's going to protect you. So there's those three things again. Peace, power, righteousness on the end. And the circle again, how they meet. And uh, they says, uh, the pacemaker says, uh, we'll give you a duty. And the duty is that you watch that western door, the western door of the longhouse, because when you see the longhouse that extends from the east to the west, you can look out, look through the, the door of the east and look out the uh, western door. You can look through all of those longhouses and see the other side. So, what you will use as a symbol is the slippery elm bark. 
that when other nations or other ones that want to come in, if they're meant for harm, that you will throw that elm bark, slippery elm bark down and that they will slip on that. And if you can't take them out by yourself, we'll, we'll call the other nations to help you. So there again, that's a symbol. The elm bark, slippery elm bark. And that was, as that, that was their duty, and that's how they got them to, uh, to uh, join as one, the five nation. Here is what we call it's a, it's a condolence belt. And what do you see? What does that look like to you on top? Antler. So each chief, that's how, how he's Gustoa is. He's antlers got small antlers coming out on his feather hat. And there's the two sides, the two sides, the, the clear-minded side and the bereaved side. And uh, they were talking about, uh, See, somebody says, uh, oh, to dish, to dish with one spoon. I don't know how they got spoon out of it, but uh, what do you think is in the middle, like that, that dark part? What do you think it is? I'll give you a, I'll test you. Yeah, it's a beaver. He's right. Not too many can see it. But I seen it right away. Because our ancestors, when it comes to the water, the beaver will fix the water. Wherever you put him, he'll fix the water. If you have trouble with your water, that's, he'll fix it. And they also used wolves. There's the Akwasasne two wolf belt. There's a wolf on each end of that belt. And also, uh, there's a custodian of a belt in Tahnawadi, which our white brother calls Tanawanda, but we call it Tahnawadi. And uh, that is our hunting and fishing. All nations will share in the bounty of in the water and the land. But they will not use a knife because a knife could cause bloodshed and um, this is why we will eat out of the dish together. And um, why do you think they chose the wolf for the forest? What does a wolf do in the forest? What does it eat? When it sees a group of, of uh, animals together, which one are they gonna take? They're gonna take the weakest one. And they know, they know right away which is the weak, weakest one. That's who they're gonna go after. So what does that do? It creates, the, the forest is strong. The animals are strong. 
because that's the, they take they, they get rid of all the the weak ones that's why our ancestors chose the beaver and the wolf as a symbol This one here, Niagara, but we don't say Niagara. We say Niagara. Niagara means that it's a breastplate. It's a Mohawk word, means the breastplate of a man. And that's the same thing what uh, Alan talked about this morning. 12 Great Lakes nations from the west, 12 Great Lakes nations from the east. And there, again, our white brother, what, he's, what he wants, there's ulterior, ulterior motives. Because prior to that, revolutionary war is coming. And why does he want our friends, friendship? He wants us to fight for him. That's why they made that. That in the middle of those two, where the line is a little longer, the white part, where it's joined, that's the actual document of that. And that's like, a, like the chain we call it almost like a silver covenant chain. That's a friendship. And the ends there, if you join that, they join up. A circle again. And when we do every belt at the end, we always say, as long as the sun shines, as long as the grass grows green at certain times of the year, and as long as a river flows, that's how long those words will last. But Tom Porter always says, that's the Reader's Digest version. <laughs> because the simple opening address the words that they would not forget anything in the grass, you know, you have the leaders of the, the strawberries are, are in that grass and you have bugs and in the water, fish, and you have our ancestors never left anything out because our, our white brother would have would asked us, who are the witnesses? The witnesses are all of those. And it would take around six hours. Who could sit today and listen to somebody for six hours? Because our ancestors, we didn't have to go to work. We didn't have to go shopping or go and get sales at Walmart or anything. We had a, we had a life that thought was never gonna end the, the way our ancestors lived. We had every, all these things figured out, but we don't have to worry. Like you don't have to worry about like what's on that pipe. All you have to do is put it out in the universe. I wanna know what that says on that pipe. And the universe will give it back to you. All you have to do is believe. Because uh, it's like me going to, uh, I used to go with all these uh, questions for when I used to listen to Jake. And he'd come with all these questions. And I'd be listening, all of a sudden he'd answer that. You'd answer that one. You'd, uh, so from after that, I just quit. I just quit uh, 
taking questions and just listened because uh, it, it, it's so, uh, I guess, uh, you feel lucky that you did all of that because all, all those speeches and all, that, all our condolences, I, I taped them all and I taped him and so, so during COVID in my workshop, that's who I'd be listening to. I'd be just opening a dress first and then listening to all, the, all his words. And a lot of the, lot of the words were in, in, in our language, but it takes a lifetime. It takes a lifetime to learn your language. But it starts with one word in three, he used to say 365 days, you learn 365 words, and then you keep on adding on to it. And uh, so that was the same process of runners that come up here and brought them uh, invitation, wampum, to the nations here. And that's where the, uh, they figure around 2,700 uh, gathered there. And when they come, they come with the best. They come with their best clothes. So it must have been unbelievable. And where, where that took place, where Niagara is there, it was way up this stream because uh, the, the water ate away all that rock. You know, it's, it's way up this way. So Table Rock, where it was, is not where that was when they made that belt. Okay. And this here is... Uh, is the 24 nation and and this is a, something that um i learned a lot from uh, alan alan corbier because when i first come up here um i made uh, that 1764 and a little later i made made start making these but man oh man i made so many of them over and over and over again and uh people ask me how the heck can you sit there and do all that and but I'm just in another place. Like anybody that does crafts, it does, time doesn't matter. Get up, four o'clock, that's, that's, that's when my day starts, four o'clock every day. And I, I get to thinking about stuff like that, thinking about stuff that I've told you that just come and, and it, it's all of how to make things better to benefit our people. And if, you, and if it takes getting out there and uh, getting these words in your head that uh, in their hearts, that's all white hearts. Our people had white hearts and still, still today, it's that way. And that rock, that's what they tied. They tied a rope on to that. It was a tree at first, and then they tied it to the rock. And that, then that's where all them gifts started coming in. And now at Grand River, we just, for gifts, we just give ourselves bread and cheese <laughs> at, on the Queen's birthday. But that, that uh, I remember that as a kid. I, I, I think, that, I thought that was pretty good. Just, uh, and that's where you meet people that you haven't seen in a long time. You know, that's, uh, that's such a good feeling. Just, uh, just uh, um, we used to get the same thing, blankets and stuff, you know. But now we just made a tradition for ourselves. But... Um, no, I, somebody was saying this morning, uh, like uh, the, this this name uh, Conway. I didn't know who the what nation that was that Conway. And then uh, here the um, Piscataways uh, by uh, uh, Chesapeake Bay. That's who they referred to the Nanticokes as the Conway. 
That's how that. And then I put that together. I said, "Oh, that, that's an Enico. That's one of our, one of our adopted nations." So when we come to think about it, that's what, that's what has done, adopt adopting, like our nations together, because we're all, we all have the same blood. We're all the same, thinking the same, and. At one time, we were all the same place and migrated from the west out this way. You just come a little bit further north. And uh, I guess that's about it for that one. And uh, that, um, that 1764 belt, that's about what the same words is here. How we the, the, the three links, the silver, we call it the silver covenant chain. But that line symbolically means that it's uh, the chain made of silver. Because when our white brother first come, he says they were, they were gonna make it with iron. And so our people already knew that about silver and about how it tarnishes. So now, when silver tarnishes, and it gets to that point, that now our people say, now it's time to repolish that, wipe that silver clean, and remember the words of our ancestors, of peace, friendship, and trust. And our Ongohoe, to your left, is a white heart, and I already knew that our white brother had a black heart. And still today, it's that way. And we're not thinking about everyone. We're thinking of people, of leadership, of government. Because you you talk to a normal person, oh, I haven't got a black heart. You know, I feel good about that. And I says, yeah, but it's your government that uh, has the black heart. And there again, you would uh, burn tobacco for that. And they would have a greeting. We would say, now when we meet our white brother, we will dress as our ancestors did. And when we meet, and we will repolish, repolish those words. So uh, when, I, when I brought the two-row up here, I, I know you probably uh, didn't, you didn't do that with our white brother, but I says, you know, I think you can borrow, borrow that concept, because that's what we got to have to do as Ongohoi people. Your Anishinaabek brother, but we were, will help each other. And that, because um, for the future, of our seven generations, this is who we're doing it for. We're not doing it for ourselves. We're thinking about seven generations ahead. And the chiefs, that's how they make their decision. Seven generations ahead. It says that the eyes of the eagle is like, supposed to be like the mind of a chief. They're supposed to be able to see far ahead. And at one time, we were seven generation, thought about seven generations ago that our ancestors thought about us. And um, it's, uh, like I say, the change is gonna be very, very hard. You know, even for myself, I lived through that. I, I think when I was uh, 10 years old, we still didn't have hydro. And uh, we were all right. And, um, but one day we're gonna have to do, go through that again. 
wonder what people's gonna do for phones then people's people's gonna suffer <laughs> I know people's on their phones or uh, you know a lot And this one here, Anushnabik Negoswanta, Jibri Friendship. And uh, I guess uh, they come to a point where, uh, when maybe the Haudenosaunee were enemies of people up here. But a lot of our ancestors that come up this way, they weren't after to make war. We were coming up here to drive the priests into the ocean and send them back to where they come from. Because we says that when they come into our tori territories, they says, if your belief is so good, why are you always arguing about it? Our creator is your creator. He just put us, uh, give us a different language. So, we thought that if we fight one another, soon there's not going to be very many left on either side. So, I think that we should make friendship to one another. And there's those three lines again, of those three things of friendship, peace, friendship, and trust, that connect our fires to here. And I don't know why, uh, I know uh, we have 13, 13 is a lucky number for us, you know, our people, representing 13 moons. And I said, if we ever made a high-rise apartment, we'd put a 13th floor on it. And um, so that's all, all, all to do with, um, like I say, if our white brother didn't come here, because when our creator uh, told us that he says, forgive me for making, giving our white, the white brother, your white brother, the power to be able to build a ship and to come across the ocean to here. Because I put them over there. That's where they were supposed to, supposed to remain. And look what has happened. They brought all of this disease we call it the leg bone, the, uh, I guess, the uh, gandigahadenos, which is alcohol. It started with rum first, and then it went to, of course, out beer now, and now, the black book, the fiddle, the deck of cards, silver, they made that to come to destroy us. Because our, our, our people had a way. Our way is thanking, giving thanks to everything that uh, the Creator put here on the grass, the berries. We honor the strawberries. We honor the beans the corn and the squash. We honor all that. And there's songs that go with it. Before you plant your garden, you gather at the end of your garden and you grab, hold those seeds and you sing for them. Because they have a light. There are, there's a light and they grow. And then you put them in the ground. And that, that, that's, the, that's when uh, I asked um, 
Uh, when, when do we dress up? When do we put our on our own holy clothes, our, our, our stuff? And, and uh, Jim told me, he says, well, he says, the main one is when you go to ceremony, you wear it. Then, when you plant your garden and you hope for a good season, that then you can gather at the end of the garden, put your clothes on, and uh, hope for a good, a good crop. And then uh, when you pass on to the spirit world, that's when you put your, your clothes on. And that's just what... Uh, so that Jibway friendship belt lives on. The stories live on. This here is uh, uh, another adopted nation. Uh, uh, right right uh, um, in the east, in the main, a little bit across from New Brunswick is the um, Penobscot. And uh, in the middle, I'm gonna give you another test. What is that in the middle? Maybe I'll, I'll give you a little help. It's really, you're supposed to look at it like that. So when you put it like that, what is it? It's the roots of the tree. The poor direction of those roots. So it says that underneath that tree will grow for roots. And if any man or any nation wants to follow the source of that smoke from the Onondaga, that they will follow those roots and they can come under the tree of the long leaves. See, that's how we would say, um, that means that the tree of the long leaves that's what we would uh, refer that to as. And that's, uh, we um, give that to them to uh, come to a condolence ceremony to see the flow of um, how we use the wampum and the good things that come from it when you, uh, we, we stand an, a new chief up. And, uh, in 1988 to now, we've seen uh, light. Well, from 1973, when Jake and all these big chiefs were uh, elevated, from to 1988, there was no condolence. I've I've never seen one. So 1988, and then 1989 again. But that was a big year of all of these uh, repatriation of uh, a lot of the belts that come back from uh, in 1988 at Grand River and, and I was there. And that's when the, um, I guess, remember when the, the sprays of the light bulb had just come on. I was standing there looking at, as a, just so people wouldn't take uh, pictures right away of the, because these belts were come from the Hay Foundation, and uh, they come in a big truck. And um, Bridge Henry, uh, he uh, burned tobacco. Jake Thomas uh, spoke, and um, and this other guy, uh, Hodra, Hodra, he uh, translated. And um, so they were all walking along, looking at these belts. And this guy, uh, Sylvanus. He uh, walks by, he looks at me, and uh, this belt, this belt was laying there, and he asked me, he says, what's that mean? I says, I don't know. He looked me right in the eye, and he says, well, you should know. 
And that's, uh, for me, that's when the light bulb come on, 1988. <laughs> so, uh, many other uh, nations were adopted in um, Nanticoke, uh, Tudelo, they were right by Branford, and we still carry on that tradition about the Tudlo. They use a, we call a dress-up ceremony, uh, we call it uh, the Four Nights uh, Gene Wasondage. That's a, that's a four-night ceremony. We use purple wampum. And uh, they were driven out uh, of their uh, land by Branford, and they come to Six Nations and, and blended in with our people. And uh, still that tradition goes on with uh, did there some uh, descendants of Tudelo, which we call Dehono, um, that um, even some Cherokee, some Cherokee, because we made a great piece. Uh, boy, that's, that's such a wonderful story. It's such a long story, but man, it's such a wonderful story about how our ancestors made peace with the Cherokee. There's um, 23 nations. And uh, when we made it with them, we told them, take it to the setting sun. And that's the, one of the greatest gatherings of nations. When they took it to the west, it went far as Mexico but, uh, about the great law. And they accepted it. But only nation that didn't was the Lakota because they were a great warrior nation. So that, that's, a, that's a long story told in just a few words here. And uh, that's such an such a, oh, uh, unbelievable story. And um, those, uh, those, those belts still exist. They call uh, the Cherokee, uh, there's a society that holds seven belts. They call it the Kotiwa uh, Custodians. And what they did with those belts when they were given them, they, uh, they come to a point where they uh, threw them in the fire and burned them. And that's when they found out what they had. Them belts didn't burn. It's like nothing happened to them. Like as if you took this in and put it in an open fire and let it burn. But it didn't burn. Not even that. Not even that burned. The, the sinew. That's when they had something very powerful. So this is this is uh, this is our bargaining power. So when we go to uh, um, places, we care. We have our people that should carry these. That's why I made sets for here, in other places. Uh, those five uh, sets, those those big belts that pertain to this area up here. That's bargaining power. So there's a lot more over there, <laughs> but um, I think I'll, because uh, uh, you, uh, you learn things by hearing it many times over. So um, I always say that I've never ever said that you don't have to tell me that story because I've heard it before. I always add a little extra, even about the, the un, uh, some sources, even from a little kid, you know, that you, you learn things. You just have to listen, because uh, little, little uh, children can tell you some things that really make you think. So, Donato Nagat Gweni, Iga Agayagatak. Thanks for listening. <laughs>